Let's talk about No Spray Sustainable Farming Bed Prep that not only makes your life easier, but will also help in creating a healthier and more productive soil. We will explore oculation when using silage tarps, an effective and eco-friendly way to control weeds, improve soil health, and prepare for planting. You'll learn when to use your broad fork, the best times to water, the ideal duration for using silage tarps. We'll also discuss the perfect timing for sowing cover crops to enrich your soil. Let's get into it. At Bootstrap Farmer, we talk to a lot of farmers, both on our farm visits and on our podcast. Without a doubt, no other statement to customers is more important than local spray-free food. No spray farming begins before we plant our first seed in the foundation of bed prepping. So let's first look at what silage tarp is and what it does. A silage tarp from Bootstrap Farmer is a six mil UV treated piece of opaque polyethylene that is black on one side and white on the other. It is made to withstand the sun's ultraviolet light that will break down cheaper pieces of plastic that are found in hardware stores. Make no mistake, these are purpose-built pieces of farm equipment designed to be waterproof, heat and cold hardy, resist wind shredding when properly installed, and is designed to last for years when properly deployed and stored at the end of the season. The science behind silage tarps is called oculation. Here's how oculation works. First, when you place a black silage tarp over a piece of land, it blocks out all the light. This triggers weed seeds in the top layer of the soil to germinate, but once they sprout, they quickly die off due to the lack of sunlight. This can greatly reduce the weed pressure for the upcoming crop. The tarp also helps to retain soil moisture, preventing the soil from drying out and allowing existing worms, fungi, and microbes to survive. This can be particularly beneficial in drier climates and during periods of low rainfall. These creatures help to break down organic matter like compost, cover crops, or crop residuals, improving the soil fertility and structure. The tarp can also help to reduce certain soil-borne pests and diseases by creating an unfavorable environment for them. The use of silage tarps combined with other practices like crop rotation and crop covering can contribute to healthy, productive soil ecosystems. Another practice you may come across in your bed prep research is solarization. Solarization involves covering the soil with a clear plastic tarp during the hottest part of the year. The sun's rays heat the soil beneath the tarp, effectively cooking weed seeds, pathogens, and pests. This method can raise soil temperatures to levels that can kill a large number of soil-borne pests, fungi, and weeds. However, it also has the potential to harm beneficial soil organisms. Solarization is most effective in hot, sunny climates and during the warmest part of the year. While both oculation and solarization can create effective stale seed beds, they do have different effects on the soil. A farmer's decision to use oculization or solarization would depend on their specific needs, the local conditions, and their farming philosophy. Farmers can use a broad fork both before and after using a silage tarp, depending on the condition of the soil and their specific farming practices. Aerating compact soil with a tool such as a broad fork is a common practice before laying a tarp. This can help improve soil structure and promote the breakdown of organic matter under the tarp. If the soil is compacted after removing the tarp, a broad fork can be used to loosen it up before planting and amending the soil. Using a broad fork in the spring will help to alleviate compaction after snow and rainfall, incorporate soil amendments, and prepare the bed for planting. Watering is a crucial step in the oculation process when using silage tarps. When you're preparing a bed using silage tarps, before laying the tarp down, it is important to water the area thoroughly. This moisture encourages weed seeds and other organic matter in the soil to begin their growth process. Then, when you place your tarp over the moist soil, it creates a dark, warm environment that further stimulates this growth. However, because the tarp blocks light, the germinating weeds can't carry out photosynthesis, causing them to die off. This process effectively reduces the weed seed bank in your soil without the need for chemical herbicides or labor-intensive weeding. As for the best time to water, it would be right before you put the silage tarp down. Ensure that the soil is well-soaked but not waterlogged. Avoid watering during the hottest part of the day to minimize evaporation and ensure deeper penetration of water into the soil. Remember, the goal here is to create an environment under the tarp that encourages weed seeds to germinate and then die off due to the lack of light. So the timing of watering is less about the time of day and more about its relationship to when you place the tarp. 
The duration for leaving a silage tarp on the soil can vary, but generally is left in place for a few weeks to a couple of months. This allows time for weeds to germinate and die back under the tarp, and also for any remaining plant residue to break down. However, several factors can influence this time frame. In warmer climates, decomposition and weed germination under the tarp can happen more quickly than in cooler climates. So in a hot summer, you might only need to leave the tarp on for three to four weeks, while in cooler spring or fall conditions, you might need six to eight weeks. If your garden has a high weed seed bank, the number of viable weed seeds in the soil, you might want to leave the tarp on longer to ensure more weeds have a chance to germinate and die off. If you're using the tarp to break down old crop residue, the amount and type of residue will affect how long you leave the tarp in place. Thicker, woodier residue will take longer to decompose than thin, leafy material. Heavier clay soils might benefit from a longer period under the tarp, as this process can help to improve the soil structure. The type of crop you plan to plant next can also influence this timing. If you're planting a crop that prefers warmer soil temperatures, like tomatoes or peppers, leaving the tarp on longer can help to warm the soil more. But remember, these are just guidelines. Every garden is unique and you might need to adjust based on your specific conditions and observations. Cover crops, also known as green manure, are plants that are grown primarily for the benefit of the soil rather than for crop yield. They are typically used to suppress weeds, manage soil erosion, and help build and improve the soil fertility and quality, and control diseases and pests. The timing for sowing cover crops in relation to the use of silage tarps is important. You can sow cover crops before applying the silage tarps. The cover crops will grow and then be killed when you apply the tarp, adding organic matter to the soil and suppressing weed growth. Alternatively, after removing the tarp, you can sow cover crops in the clean bed. This technique allows the cover crops to establish without competition from weeds, and they can continue to improve the soil until you're ready to plant your main crop. Remember, the specific timing will depend on the type of cover crop and your local growing conditions. Always check the recommended sowing guidelines for the specific cover crop you are using. Reduction of weeds and eliminating herbicides are what small farmers can do to have market advantage against industrialized farming. Front loading careful bed prep early will help to ensure a reduction of labor through weeding and better crops that are not competing with weeds for nutrients and water. Plus, working in a weed-free bed makes you a happy farmer. Remember to like, share, and subscribe if you found this helpful. We're available seven days a week in the comments below, by email, by phone, or at bootstrapfarmer.com.